Today is kind of a culmination of the past few days or the last week or so. After I got everything edited together, I realized it's not that there's negative vibes or overtones in the vehicle, vehicle, <laughs> video, <laughs> but there's, I don't know, a few frustrating things that seem to happen. I guess we could just call this a typical day in the life. I mean, maybe not typical, not every day is frustrating or whatnot, but stick around till the end of the video. As you notice everything that's going on throughout the day, I kind of sum everything up at the end and have a little discussion about why I'm even publishing videos like this. So, uh, yeah, this isn't a downer or anything, but I just want to give you a heads up. It's um, not the floweriest of rainbow fluffy bunny rabbit uh, vlogs, I guess. So it was raining yesterday, and I think it's still raining right now, actually. I just got up a little bit ago. It's supposed to rain for the next week. Anyways, between rainstorms, I ran out in the boundary yesterday and uh, got caught in one rainstorm. Luckily, I was able to shelter in a mini mart instead of getting soaked. But the boundary is not exactly water resistant. And um, well, personally, I haven't had any problems with it yet. I also haven't run around in the rain with it very much yet. But I've gotten messages from other users of these things, and uh, apparently puddles are bad. But as with any power chair, after being in the rain, you've uh, got to dry the thing off. So, I've got the uh, carpet blower here. I think sitting on a towel, because, you know, brand new floors and stuff. But I think it's pretty much all dried off now. It was pretty gross yesterday. And when I got back, I took the thing uh, downstairs and hosed it off. And uh, I'll probably have to service the chains now because I definitely got a lot of water on everything. I guess I could probably turn this thing off. Ah, a little bit quieter. All right, well, anyways, there's that thing. I need to do a video explaining how you service chains on this thing at some point. Um, but I'm lazy. Oh, by the way, the uh, the F3 is sitting back there in the hole. You can see the foot plates right there. Um, something happened to that, and we're gonna have to send one of the modules back to Permobile to have them fix it. So can't do the review on that yet. I was actually getting ready to do that. Oh, and the other thing, you may have noticed I'm just using a Permobile charger on this chair instead of the normal 10 amp one. Well, that's because this chair, I used to always put back here. And for whatever reason, I decided that was a good spot to put it. But then, not too long after that, I realized that this little space is kind of annoying to get the bounder in and out of every day. But I had someone plug in the charger for the bounder behind the fridge. So the cord just comes out here and I can plug it in. But I can't exactly unplug this on my own. You can see the charger down there, but it's legit plugged in behind this thing. Um, so we have to figure that out at some point. <laughs> okay, I need to get some coffee and start this day. Oh, I just dropped this camera for the second time ever in like two years. Um, this seems to be working okay. Focuses and stuff. All right, anyways, I'm uh, down here on the floor in the process of cleaning out the bounder. See those filthy rags there? Uh, after the rain and stuff, this thing got pretty nasty. And I realized that I need to extend this rear fender a little bit. These tires tend to hold a lot more water or fling it further, so I'm gonna get some little rubber pieces and attach them to these mud flaps and bring them down to about here. Then uh, probably wind up looking like some sort of hero driving a WRX with the little crooked mud flaps in the back. <laughs> uh, also, I'm finding that the little latch here for the back of the battery is not quite lined up. 
this chair does have an easy lock bracket installed on it, so I'm thinking when whoever installed that did it, they screwed up the alignment because I'd have to redrill holes for this latch to work. And I noticed the bolts were just taken out. But anyways, um, it's all clean now. Just uh, getting the latch mechanism fixed. And then uh, I think we'll run over to a hardware store and see what we can find for some mud flat materials. Uh, by the way, it is like 60, de 60, de ugh, I can't even talk. 60 degrees outside today, like some of my favorite weather, but it's ridiculously humid. So I'm running this thing in dehumidifier mode to uh, keep the air in here less disgusting. All right, a couple things on the agenda. One, I think we're gonna go to Goodwill Bins and try to find some materials for the fenders on this chair. Maybe some old floor mats or something. I, I don't know exactly, we'll just go there and look around. Uh, item two, uh, we're gonna stop by that one business and see if their sidewalk has yet cleared itself. And probably three of the most important, I um, keep forgetting to put on cold brew at night, which means I do not have coffee. So we're gonna have to go somewhere and grab some. And it's not gonna be that place with the green logo, I don't think, because let's just say I prefer McDonald's at this point. I mean, not that it's bad, I just kind of go through phases, but anyways, um, let's uh, go see what we can find. So we're a few blocks down from this place. I can't quite see if there's still tables out there or not. Wait, no, uh, everything's definitely still there. Just realized I put this camera on the wrong way. There we go. So someone said to me just a minute ago, why don't you use the sidewalks? I don't know, why don't you tell me? Don't exactly see any curb cutouts or ramps. So if you don't like me in the street, get over it. slightly annoyed it's because I was I had two different people tell me to use the sidewalk <laughs> between uh, Goodwill and here and uh, I don't like I've kind of gone away from shouting things at people just because why 
but in my mind, I just really want to say, what an ignorant thing to say. I think that if it's in a situation where like it's someone on a bicycle or they might actually stop and they just yell that at you, if you say that's incredibly ignorant, in their mind, they'll stop and be like, wait a minute, what, what, do, you, what do you mean? Because if you just say, oh, screw you or whatever, they'll keep going. Um, but if you're in the mood to educate someone, I think saying it's an ignorant statement may get them to stop and then you can explain briefly um, why you're in the street. Um, I just find it funny though that all the bicycles and stuff, like they use a very large portion of tax dollars to get their pathways and stuff installed and then they still shout at me about things. Oh, also, at Goodwill Bins, I found this little um, camera three-in-one fisheye telephoto lens setup. It is this weird, well, little clip of weird. And then there's a couple lenses in here. I think, I can get them out of here. There we go. Yeah, so we got a couple of lenses here that clip onto this thing. And I think you screw these two lenses together in different arrangements to get uh, three different modes. Uh, so we'll have to play around with that when we get back. What is this? Some brand I've never heard of, but it's ROHS compliant. <laughs> well, I must say that was a pretty successful trip to Goodwill Bins. We got these floor mats here. They're the extra spiky ones. I'll probably have to cut those off, but a couple of those I think cut up should make some great fender extensions for this thing. Uh, we're gonna deal with that later though. Um, as I was saying earlier, yeah, I do probably about 60% of my filming with this GoPro. It actually works really well. Um, the sidewalks around here are not exactly um, friendly. Um, not only do they not have curb cutouts, they have large pieces of angle iron fastened to the edge of them. Uh, so it's not just a middle finger, but it's one of those rotating jobs that you get from a really angry person down the freeway. Like, not only is it enough to flip you the bird, but they've got to like do the rotation. <laughs> Anyways, um, I'm gonna head down to a subway that's probably about four miles from here. And uh, interesting point of note, there are more subways now in downtown Portland than there are Starbucks. They almost outnumber them two to one. It's like 1.71 to one. It's actually pretty funny. Um, but I'm gonna go get some food. I haven't done that yet today. Then we're gonna come back and deal with these floor mats. I still don't have a drill here. Um, I keep forgetting to grab that every time I'm at storage. But I think we should be able to make some pretty nice looking fenders because I don't want to like hot glue a bunch of garbage onto this. I've got a scheme for actually installing these fender extensions in a way that'll look somewhat decent. My arm's getting tired from holding up this camera. This, I mean, while this DSLR is small, it's not exactly the lightest thing in the world, especially compared to this. <laughs> I keep my, okay, so quick tip, if you're filming with a GoPro, here a seven black. Uh, if you're gonna do vlogging, you want to, oh wait, I accidentally changed the settings. Whoops. Oh dang it, I think that means I accidentally took photos instead of videos on some of the last things I did. Oh, I know, we're still good. Okay, um, so if you want to vlog with a GoPro Hero 7 Black, um, you want to set it to linear mode instead of ultra-wide or wide field of view. That way you, get, you still get a pretty wide-angle um, view, but you don't get the weird warping and fishbowl edges. Also, you want to go into ProTune and change your settings to exposure, exposure compensation minus one or minus 1 1.5. And that takes away some of the weird fuzziness you get with skin tones and whatnot. But those two settings and the built-in microphones are actually fairly decent on this thing. And uh, half the time I can seamlessly transition between the DSLR and this thing. And some situations this almost looks better in my opinion, but uh, you can't really tell. I still have this old Sony here. Uh, this is I think an HDR. AS50, um, pretty decent little camera. Uh, stabilization's fairly good on it. It's got a medium uh, field of view that's actually pretty good. I drilled holes in the front of it a long time ago in an old video uh, for the audio so I could keep this case on it. But this thing, this thing actually still works pretty well. Um, 
I don't use it as much just because the GoPro is, I mean, awesome. <laughs> but anyways, um, all right, let's go get a sub and a tub. Uh, let me get a spicy Italian salad. salad? Yeah. It's a wee bit on the breezy side. It looks like it might rain at any moment. According to the radar map though, that's not supposed to happen. Um, so, got my subway. And I feel like I'm probably gravitating towards Goodwill. Not that I want to actually buy anything, but, you know, something to do since I'm already out here and stuff. There goes the Willamette Jet Boat Tours. So they're running dual 302 V8s in those boats uh, with jet pumps. Actually, looks like they're coming back this way. You should be able to hear it. But anyway, since they're running jet pumps on those things, they don't have to have one of the engines reverse rotation. Um, so, just got a couple of standard fuel injected 302s and a uh, great big super expensive aluminum sled and you're set to go. I was trying to be polite, but I guess I can call the city. You're not supposed to be parking on the sidewalk at all. I mean, why can't you just park like everyone else does? It's not even for me, it's inconvenient for anyone who's trying to use a sidewalk. I'm not just trying to like pull hairs because I'm being selfish. It's, it's, a, it's a big ongoing thing. I mean, homeless people block this ramp, the sidewalks, and I mean, there just isn't a reason, you know? I said, what you're saying sounds exactly like people that come up with excuses when they park in disabled spots without a permit. I understand you're trying to do stuff, but like you can park on the curb. It's not a big deal or over here or whatever. I mean, the sidewalk's not a parking space. That's all I'm saying. So, so you, would, you want me to park like half on the, on the street and half on, on this thing here? Mean, Everyone else just parks along the side of the road. I don't understand why you have to park on the sidewalk. Like I said, do whatever you're gonna do. I'm just, that's where I'm at on it. So have a good day. I was gonna say something about this, but I decided not to. Maybe I did, I don't know. Anyways, a couple days ago, I came through here. The sidewalk over here was blocked because there's two vans parked on it. And I said to the guy, hey, uh, what are we doing? And he's like, I forget what he said. Something kind of snarky, but you see, there we go. Um, I'm trying to remember exactly what he said. I was like, you know, if you're, Oh, it looks like he's backing it into his garage now, which is where it actually belongs. Um, he said something like, oh, that's what he said. I, I said, look, people need to use a sidewalk and, you know, we can't get through here. And he said, thank you for the note in kind of a condescending way. I was being polite and nice and everything, but I was going to comment and say, killing people with kindness doesn't always work. And I'm pretty sure next time I come through here, that van's still going to be on the sidewalk. Sure enough, a couple days later, still on the sidewalk. So, killing people with kindness doesn't always work. Um, I'll just call the city and say, hey, they're parking on the sidewalk. Hey, it looks like we're still clear. Excellent. I'll have to find a broom or something at some point. Maybe I can find one at bins or whatever. Actually, I guess they're cheap at Walmart. I can just buy one. There's a lot of nails and stuff up here on the ground still. So that particular walkway is no longer usable, it looks like. But you know, I come out of the Goodwill and it's uh, drizzling outside. 
As long as it doesn't actually convert into rain, we should be okay. I do have an umbrella if I need it, but I don't want to be exactly caught with an umbrella since I'm from Portland and that's not a thing you do. <laughs> Plus there's, a, plus there's a fairly pragmatic reason for not using umbrellas. It's usually extremely windy when it's raining. It would appear as though something came out of the bushes, crossed the road, and went under the fence. Interesting. Oh, there's an eagle. Let's see, is this thing zoom? Uh, yeah, it's right there. See it? Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing on the Note 9 now and see if it's any better. Check it out, there's an eagle. I wouldn't have noticed that eagle, but there was a guy sitting on the other side of the train tracks right here, all crouched down with a two foot long lens on his camera. I was like, I wonder what he's looking at. So I followed the trajectory of his lens. And there's an eagle on a post. Uh, actually, same eagles as to why I can't fly my drone in this particular area. There's more than one of them, and those things do not like drones. They will attack them, and have been known to do so. So, yeah, stuff and things. I just realized something, and it's probably why I haven't completely woken up yet. I forgot to get coffee. Um, all that running around, and, uh, one of the main reasons I completely forgot about. I guess that means I'm probably gonna have to go to Starbucks. Meh. I'm editing this video and I keep finding things I need to add in at the end. Um, so recently Patreon has changed some of their policies, there's been a bit of a ripple in that whole world and have lost a few Patreons, but there are a few new ones as well. And you may notice that as their names scroll up the screen, there's a few of them that say link below. And those are the people that are paying $3 or more a month and they have a link that they would like you to check out. So please go down below and click on the links. There's some fundraisers, there's some social media, there's some people that create music and whatnot. So please scroll down there, give them some love, check out the uh, links that they want to be shown. And uh, yeah, now back to mud flaps. All right, finally time to go ahead and attempt to combine these floor mats with the bounder. I'm probably not gonna film it because I have to get on the floor to do it. And I can only be on the floor for a certain amount of time before the dysreflexia starts freaking out. So I'm just gonna do it and then I will show you when we're done the final product. But I'm anticipating this shouldn't be that difficult. Fast forward about 20 minutes. Uh, I've got sort of the rough design for these things cut out. I'm probably going to scale them down a tiny bit, maybe round the edges, but essentially they just kind of slide into the frame right here. And I decided not to put them underneath this fender because when you're backing up, the suspension will compress a little bit and also when you're hitting bumps and sometimes the tires will just barely touch. So I want to leave as much clearance in there as possible. But we sort of got them here uh, in the basic shape I want. What I'm going to do is, I still have to get my drill, it's not here, but I'm going to drill some little tiny like eighth inch holes here and use well, probably some black hardware, but I'll run some little screws through there and I will attach them back here, which will help kind of force them down in a curl shape like that. Because most of the issues I'm having is water flying up back here and it's getting past the fender since we're moving faster and this tread tends to sling water. But that's the basic idea for right now. And after looking at it, I'm probably gonna cut down the width a little bit just cause, I mean, they look kind of funky right now. But uh, when they're all done, I think this'll be a pretty decent setup. Well, that's what I'm telling myself anyways. Ooh, coffee. Well, I think it turned out fairly well. Um, might do a little bit of tweaking, but for the time being, it's functional. Here's what we got. Uh, 
They extend out just not quite to the edge of the tire, but close because I didn't want them interfering with uh, you know walls or doorways or anything like that. And I cut them both so they look sort of similar. This one has the black line on the bottom there. Uh, this one it's a little bit wider, but hey, you know, whatever. Uh, we got some hardware in here and black washers, which may have been colored with a Sharpie, but hey. Um, they don't stick out further than the anti-tippers on the back, so yeah. I think we're good to go for now. I don't know what I think about the look. I mean, function over uh, style, I guess, but I don't know. I, uh, I might want to fasten that down. I'm probably just being picky. I think we're good. Oh, yes. A lot of annoying things happened over the last couple days. And, you know, you may have your own opinions on how you would handle things or what you do differently. That's fine. But I like to include stuff like this to illustrate to other people that you're not alone. I'm not the only person experiencing issues with people shouting things at them and crosswalks being blocked and just all kinds of random stuff as you try to go throughout your day. Now, obviously, the way you handle these situations is going to be different for everyone. And, you know, if you let it, it's easily going to get you in a funk and you'll be upset. So I try to find things to do, like working on this wheelchair, building fenders for it, and just other projects to kind of offset things and get your mind off of it. Because, yeah, a lot of stuff happens every day that's beyond your control. And sure, you could try to be nice to everyone, and at some point, you're going to get to the... You're going to have an issue where... Uh, I don't know, I, a long time ago someone told me about, they, they had this dog, it was a collie, and they used to train and breed them and whatnot. Apparently those dogs are like, a lot of times, whatever, pretty friendly and whatnot, but they have a breaking point. And at a certain point, they just go absolutely nuts, and to my understanding, that's kind of how that breed is. Well, you can run around and be nice to everyone, but at some point, in the back of your mind, <clears throat> things are going to start building up, and you're gonna keep being friendly to everyone, and people are still occasionally, or whenever, going to be rude and cause problems, and you're gonna end up with a point where you're bottling up all this frustration you have inside you. Now, I think it's better to just strike a balance. I mean, say a few things here and there. Yeah, that guy parking on the sidewalk, I jumped into that in the middle. It probably seemed like I was maybe being rude, but, you know, not saying I'm gonna behave the same way he was behaving, but a couple days previous, he was super rude to me. And I just let it go. I was like, hey, you know, this is blocked, whatever. And he's like, thank you for the note. I just let it go. And he literally happened to be outside. He had just parked his van and he was going inside as I went through there. And that's when this clip was filmed. I wasn't planning on filming that. And, uh, you know, it's all in what you do with the situations in life. And for me, when I first ended up in a chair, Things seemed a lot different than I expected, but it helped me out immensely. There was a forum at the time that has since been shut down, but you could get online and chat with other people that are disabled and whatnot. And it was an immense help to me knowing that other people are out there experiencing the same problems. So yes, you're entitled to your opinions. You may have handled this stuff differently, and that's fine. No problems there. This is just to illustrate that you're not alone. That's why I include things like this. And you know, Tomorrow's another day, and I like to think that, you know, we can reset, take things one day at a time, and evolve, and come up with ways to deal with things. You know, find a hobby or whatnot, but this is just a small slice right here of this particular episode. And, you know, a lot of my older videos, you may notice that I seem to be more cranky about things, but it's an, like I said, it's an evolution. You learn how to deal with things, you learn how you're going to react, and you learn to avoid certain situations. Like, I won't ride the bus, period. I have not found a way to ride the bus and deal with the confrontations that occur on it. Now, other people I know here locally, I commend them. They kind of have to put up with it, and, you know, they figure out ways to deal with it, but I'll ride the train. It's not usually as big of a deal, and I learned I don't have confrontations. Certain parts of town I don't like going to, just, you know, all I'm saying is look at yourself, look how you react, Make notes if you need to, and then just try to slowly update what you do and try to learn from your experiences. That's all there is to it. I, I'm not mad at anyone, I'm just trying to explain 
where I'm coming from here and why I am filming this stuff. <laughs> and I, hopefully it helps you guys out. Also, just take a moment to think back through history. A lot of good things have happened, a lot of terrible things have happened, but I think most people can agree that most of the change that has occurred has been the result of people standing up and saying, hey, this is not right. This needs to change. Just a thought. Sometimes I feel like I'm just wandering around with a camera and I, it's just me and this camera. Obviously there's feedback in the comments and whatnot, but I don't know, sometimes I just feel like I'm not really doing anything. But then, you know, I get comments from people and other people chat with me and whatnot. And, you know, they, it basically makes it worthwhile. So anyways, short um, explanation there about things in life in general or whatever. But uh, I know next time, the next few days or whatever are going to be better. So we will push forward. <laughs> <laughs>